Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. This video is part of a long series. Bitin serie, Fair Use Saga, Linux Mint Saga. To watch the full video, click the link on the end screen. Or in the description. Thank you. Chapter 7 Most Ambitious Release Then came Mint's Most Ambitious Release, as Clem described, Mint 15. Codenamed Olivia. Not Olivia. It went live on 29 May 2013, six months after 14 Nadia. For the first time, Cinnamon got higher billing compared to Mate. But the star. Of Christmas, ng Pasko, Joe Marichan, the star seemed to be MDM, which now featured three greeters. The GTK greeter, a simple login screen made of a GTK dialogue, GTK GNOME toolkit. The GDM greeter, which supported XML themes called GDM themes. GDM, the GNOME Display Manager, of which MDM is a fork. And HTML greeters, which supported most web technologies. Allowing, for example, to fly love at 30,000 feet. More from the release notes on MDM. Consistent with the ease of use? No. Comfort. Philosophy. Two new mint tools ship with Olivia. Olivia. I keep forgetting about that. Replacing Ubuntu software properties were two Mint tools. Mint sources, software sources, would make it easier to add and choose repositories. Repositories were to get updates and programs. No need to type sudo app-get on the terminal. Software sources would also allow switching mirrors. Speed test results would be shown to help the user decide. Remember, this was a feature on the update manager, formerly Mint Update, beginning in 8 Helena. Other sections of software sources would manage PPAs, additional third-party repositories, authentication keys, and maintenance. So, don't believe any rando on the internet who says you have to use the terminal all the time to get anything installed on Linux. Fake news. Coming soon, maybe. Mint drivers, the driver manager, would allow choosing what driver version to install. Because newer does not always mean better. Just like how upgrading is never safe. 
Cinnamon's Nemo got a redesign. Instead of closing our eyes, let's play Spot the Differences in the comments section. Yes, my videos have audience participation. Not just subscribe and ring the bell. Nemo sidebar could be hidden. Or it could be used to display either places or the tree view. Places view allowed some items to show a used space slash free space bar. New to Cinnamon was Nope, that's not a screensaver. Just like how this is not a hoverboard. These are screensavers. Olivia's Olivia's is a lock screen. Just like in Android, the lock screen could feature a custom message. By May 2013, Microsoft had already discontinued desktop gadgets. At the same time, Mint was only now introducing desklets. Back when I was using the Vista Sidebar, or Seven's Desktop Gadgets, or Carl Sidebar, I would use the slideshow, notes, news, CPU, weather, media player, and social media gadgets. In my 22 Wilma and LMDE6 installs, I use yet another RSS reader, YAR, by J. Toberling, and CPU load by Shorshi. I used to have Weather Desklet by Tippy Chris, but it slowed down the time it took from login to desktop. So, I stick to the weather applet on the taskbar by Mock Turl instead. For notes, I use Mint's Sticky. Spoilers for later, I guess. No need for the photo frame desklet. I just rely on my wallpaper background. And error 404, media player desklet not found. The closest is not even a desklet. It's the radio applet by Dirigloo for it. I'm pretty sure that means something. My panel, taskbar, is brimming, full of applets. Add to the ones that I just mentioned. Cinnamon Timer by Jake1164. Q Redshift by Kintao. And battery applet with monitoring and shutdown. BAMS BAMS by P.D. Curtis. I guess what I'm trying to say is, there are not enough good desklets. I think that's because desklets came too late. Spices, including applets and desklets, could be installed directly without going to the Cinnamon website. However, even now, these spices have separate managers. Why not a spices manager like the software manager, which received minor updates in Olivia? The welcome screen looked shinier more welcoming than the previous 
solid color gray. Cinnamon system settings now covered all settings. The GNOME control center no longer had a purpose. Just like Emir's B10, just look at them flat lines. On screen is a roundup of other cinnamon changes. Mate would get under the hood and visual improvements. Plus, Mint menu and Mint desktop. Mint tools introduced way back in 2.1 Beya, with the updates in every Mint version running with GNOME 2, would now be compatible with the GNOME 2 fork Mate. Mint menu could be opened just by pressing the Super Windows key. No more control super. From this point, we won't be going into a mate deep dive. The post GNOME 2 improvements to mate could be the topic of a separate video. How GNOME 2 refuses to die. Subscribe, ring the bell, and comment on the YT page of this video. If you want that. Lastly, here are other changes, including artwork. Olivia featured the Ubuntu 13.04 Raring Ringtail Package Base. And in turn, got the KDE and XFCE. 32 and 64 bit treatment. The Cinnamon and Mate editions continued to have their no codex 32 and 64 bit versions. The announcement reported that OEM images would be available a week after 29 May 2013. But as you can see from the edition's December 2013 snapshot from the Wayback Machine, Error 404, OEM images not found. LMDE Update Pack 7 dropped on 23 September 2013, but with no new LMDE ISO. Six months after Olivia. Six months after Olivia. The Mint team released 16 Petra on 30 November 2013. Besides system, performance, artwork, and software manager improvements, Petra debuted. Again, Pinoy ako, Pinoy tayo. Petra debuted with the USB stick formatter, easily accessible from Nemo. Right-click USB or ISO. MDM settings were simplified to make it, quote, far less intimidating than before, end quote. The last Logged in user could log in just by entering the password. No need to look for their username. MDM also came with NumLock support, which is important since without NumLock, my keys in my netbook get mixed up. Since I can't see what I'm typing in, it's a struggle. With the default theme, Mint aimed to pave the way for animated backgrounds. 
Think Vistas Aurora or the Longhorn Days login screen. Talk about playing catch up. Whether anyone made animated backgrounds, and more importantly, whether anyone used them. Well, hello, Captain Obvious. Speaking of light DM, Cinnamon would fully support it. User switching and guest sessions work. Mint may not have adopted Ubuntu's Unity. But the Unity greeter login screen was properly integrated with Petra. The star of the show, though, the C word, of course. No, not that C word. We have a long way to go before we get to lockdown 2020. Petra star is, of course, Cinnamon. 2.0 with sound effects or alerts for common events. Alerts had a separate volume slider from the main volume. User applet taking a cue from Windows 8 Milestone 1 builds. Account details settings as well as Users and Groups Settings Cinnamon was fashionably late to the Windows party. Ding! Improvements to Edge Tiling AeroSnap Again, ease of use. No. Comfort. For Windows users. And the new Edge Snapping I always use edge tiling because I stick to one workspace. Again, I can't change the background for other workspaces, so what's the point? Edge snapping? Not so much. I prefer picture in picture or always on top. Cinnamon made it easier to choose an app for opening a file. File transfers continue on the system tray even if the window is closed. Another facelift for Nemo. Bookmarks and devices now appeared on the move to and copy to context menus. Nemo got new extensions for previewing files. Just like in Longhorn Days. Nemo Media Columns. Though, Media Columns is a resource hog. Just like Longhorn. And Nemo Preview. A goodbye. Mint for win. The Linux Mint VM inside Windows was not available for Petra. OEM 64-bit ISOs for 16 Petra, Cinnamon, and Mate return. After being missing in action in 15 Olivia. Cinnamon, Mate, both the no-codex and codex variants, KDE and XFCE, had both 32 and 64 bit releases. Petra had an Ubuntu 13.10 Saucy Salamander package base. November and December 2013 would mark two consecutive all time highs in donations, followed by another all time high on April 2014. Site traffic also doubled, and all statistics rose. Maybe because of Windows.
LMDE Update Pack 8 came out on 4 February 2014, bringing Petra's Cinnamon 2.0 and Mate 1.6 to LMDE. As promised, a new LMDE ISO was released on 2 March 2014. Let's revisit the main team from the time of Petra's release. Clem did not move back to France, but replaced the Irish flag anyway. Kendall Weaver maintained the LXD and Fluxbox editions. Although I haven't mentioned any LXDE or Fluxbox edition in this video. Chapter 7, in case you're watching the full video. Shane Joe Lazar remained with the team even after stepping down as Fluxbox edition maintainer. The team now included forums administrators, and local communities leaders. That's just the main team. Thanks to Mint's growth in popularity, maybe citation needed, there were more teams outside of the main team. Teamception, I guess. Let me know what you thought of this video. Comment below. Please like and share this video on social media. Subscribe and ring the bell. Watch all Emir's Biten. Balik tanaw slash in hindsight. Support the show on Patreon, on PayPal, or through crypto. Thank you to my sibling. G G Arts for my avatar. Check out and support her work by clicking the links in the description. To watch the full video, the link should come up here on the end screen. Now. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.